everybody. So we're back out of the shop with another daily vlog, and today we are finishing up the Farrier's Rasp build. Now, what we're going to do today is go ahead, get the edge put on this, get it all sharpened up. But leading up to that, I'm going to talk about my sharpening system that I have. So what I do, what tools I have, why I chose that, and why I think that this is actually one of the easiest ways to sharpen knives. So we're going to jump into that. I'm going to get that explained, and then we're going to put an edge on this. We're going to chop some things, have some fun. So guys, let's jump into it, get it knocked out. Okay guys, so let's jump into it. What we have here is a Chicago Industries from Harbor Freight 1x30. You can call it a belt sander. Some people call it a belt grinder, but it's really just a little belt sander. Uh, it's not a very powerful motor, but we're not going to be hogging away material with this. I did whenever I first started, and this motor gets hot really quick, and it will actually stop if you are really, really grinding with it. But this is a great little beginner tool for someone who's just getting into knife making. Uh, it's a lot easier than using files to do your bevels. You can get one of these, set it up to where you can do a lot of knife work with it. But I use this just for doing my sharpening. Now I have two of them. I've got the main one here that I use for sharpening, plus this one that I use primarily just for resurfacing. It's got a scotch Bright belt on it. This is a worn up used belt, but it puts an amazing finish on knives and I absolutely love it. So this belt's going to stay on here for a while. This one is of course horizontal mounted so that all you have to do is just work sideways. It's really easy to see and pay attention to what you're doing. Love this one. It will stay like this for the rest of its life with me. But let's go ahead and make sure we're talking about the actual thing, the star of the show here for today. Uh, so let me tell you what I've done to this to make it better for knife making and sharpening in general. For one, whenever you get it, the first thing you're going to do is take the guard that goes on the side here and throw it in the trash because you do not need that. Two, uh, you're going to loosen the bolt that's down here that keeps this tight so that you can pull this and take the belts on and off. This is going to be for tracking back here. So it's pretty much just like a 2x72 when it comes to a retention wheel plus tracking wheel, all of that. Then the other thing you're going to do is you're going to take, there's a cover that goes right here, right here. This cover normally comes all the way down to this bottom edge here, and it makes it to where you can't use this slack area. Of course, this is a different platen, but I'm going to get into that in just a second. You want to take this and either cut it or just remove it altogether. A lot of people that use these don't even use this guard anymore. Some of them actually take this and cut it back so that they can actually use this top wheel. But I'm not using it for that because this is primarily just for sharpening. Now when it comes to my platen, I made this out of a piece of bar stock, heated it up, bent it, made sure it was perfectly square for my old work rest that I had. So that's what I had on here back whenever I was using it for doing bevels and everything. But of course I don't use that anymore. I just use the platen. But this is a 7 inch platen now. The old one is about 2.5 inches or maybe 3 inches. Uh, I did not like that. I wanted a full length one. So that's what I did with this. Now those are the things that I would change right off the bat. Change the platen. Take, well, take the side off. Undo this bolt. Take this piece off. Change out the platen. Of course, you're going to take the work rest off and everything just so you have this full length to be able to do what you got to do if you're only going to be using this for sharpening. Now, when it comes to belts, we've got a 600 grit belt that I use. So, a 600 grit belt and 800 grit belt, a 1000 grit belt. And a leather stropping belt. Those are the belts that I use to put my edges on my knives and make them razor sharp. So what I'm going to end up doing after this is I'm going to show you the different stages of belts actually sharpening a knife. And then what we're going to do is I'm just going to film it in real time. I'm going to show you exactly how long it takes me to go from no edge to fully razor sharp. So I'm not going to edit it. 
I'm going to show you me changing the belts, all that stuff. You're going to get to see it in real time, how long it takes me to put an edge on a knife with this system. So let's go ahead and get that part done. Okay, so we're going to start with that 600 grit belt. Now I decided to go ahead and actually do some time lapse on this because I didn't want y'all to have to sit through nine minutes and 10 seconds worth of knife sharpening. So what we're going to get into here is cutting in that secondary bevel or the cutting edge if you want to call it that. What we're doing is going against the rotation of the belt on this first cut. The rest of them I go with the rotation but on this one it's a personal preference of mine to go against it. I used to go against it on all three belts, but now I just do it on this first one. I get that bevel nice and centered, nice and even. Consistency is key here because everything is based off of this initial cut. So you want to take your time, you want to keep it even, and keep that same rotation with your hands as you're going through it with that sharpening. Now right here, we're going to go on the 800 grit belt. And on the 800 grit belt, we're going to go with the rotation of it. And I did have to do a little edit here because I wanted to get the lighting better and the camera angle better. So that's why that little edit was there. But what we're doing is going with the rotation of the belt. And at this point, we're going to start getting a little burr on the edge. And we're going to start refining that and making it to where it is actually sharp. And like I said, we're just refining that burr. And the burr is where the edge starts to roll over just a little bit because it's getting so thin. And this is 1000 grit. And with 1000 grit, we're going to really start seeing that burr get really pronounced to where you can actually see it and actually see the fold over of it. But again, consistency is key. We want to make sure we're being consistent with our angle as we're going through this because you can start getting it off a little bit and you won't have a nice crisp edge. I take my time when I do this and just make sure I do everything really symmetrical. And on the leather stropping belt here, we are gonna start honing that edge, which is just taking that burr and evening it out. And we just wanna keep it nice and consistent again. You don't wanna apply too much pressure on the belt. And a word of advice, Make sure you're putting your compound on the belt because you'll get both a sharp edge and a nice buff edge. That'll look really good and clean. And of course, it is definitely razor sharp. And that's how quick it is. Of course, this was only three minutes, but going from almost a dime's thickness to razor sharp and nine minutes is crazy fast. That's why I like this system. And I'm going to leave a link for this system in the description below. So this is one of my favorite tests. Got the knife right there. All right, so the blade itself is about as wide as the bottle. So I'm going to have to cut pretty low. We'll try that out. Well, cut too low. So it wasn't exactly thick enough, the blade, to actually fully cut through that, but there you go.
Nice, beautiful edge. <laughs> yeah, I think that'll work. All right, so that wraps up today's daily vlog. Did y'all have fun with that? Did y'all have fun with me cutting stuff up and chopping things and doing all that with the, the Ferrier's Rasp Knife? Guys, I am absolutely stoked with how well this turned out. I love this knife. I think it's beautiful. I'm going to be posting it for sale on my Facebook page. But yeah. That turned out awesome. It is very sharp, as y'all saw. Guys, hopefully, as I'm doing these vlog series about the different types of knives that I'm making and the different steels that they're made out of, why I'm making decisions that I'm doing, hopefully this is helping y'all out. Hopefully this is something that, that y'all can look back on and go, oh yeah, no, I saw that. I, I think that I can do that this way. Yeah, yeah, I can do it that way. I want y'all to be able to do that with these videos and I know I'm not a guy that's been making knives for 50 years or 30 years, 20 years or even 10 years, but I try a lot of different things and I practice a lot to perfect my craft and my skills and hopefully through my experience, that's the whole point behind the channel, the room's experience, hopefully behind or like things that you can get from the hindsight from things that I've learned as I've been going through this. Hopefully that helps y'all out. And uh, guys, that's the end of this one. Thank y'all for coming by. You know, if you haven't yet, give this video a thumbs up. Share this video or a video that I've done in the past that might be your favorite. And guys, if you have not yet, do yourself an awesome service and me. And go down here, hit that subscribe button right there. Turn on the notification bell so you get notified of whenever I make awesome stuff like this. Thank y'all for coming by. Thank y'all for checking that beauty out. Y'all have an amazing day. I'll catch y'all next time. <laughs>